Hi everybody, welcome back. My name's Claire. I recently did a wandering ring pour and loved it. The pattern, as I poured the, the cup out, the paint out, I did lots of lines that were overlapping and that were wrapped around each other. Um, so similarly to that, I'm going to do another painting with lots of lines. I don't think I'm going to do so much overlapping, um, but the lines, I'm going to pour it out so there will be lines of paint next to each other and then tilt it out just to see what beautiful results I can get. Um, let me show you the colours I'm using. So here are my colours. I get so inspired by the colours. Just look at them. What a what a lovely combination. You've got the lovely sort of classy bronzy colour and, and Venetian rose, but then you've got the real splash of dark purple, bright turquoise. Um, really excited to get going on this pour. Um, so I have got Montmartre turquoise. I've got Prussian blue hue uh, by De La Rowney. De La Rowney purple, Amsterdam bronze, Venetian rose, and white, um, titanium white. So all the paints are mixed with uh, PVA glue and water pouring medium, which I make myself. And I'll put the recipe in the description. The consistency of these is slightly thinner to normal. I want to get it thinner because I want to see if I can get a flatter surface on the canvas when it's dry. If you make the paints too thick, you get all these ridges on the canvas. Um, and I want to try and get a smoother, oh, there was a lump in there, wasn't there? I want to try and get a smoother finish. So these are a little bit runnier than normal. I'm going to layer up three plastic cups. So I'm just going to lay them up. I'm just going to let, pour a little bit of paint down the side of each cup. Sometimes I drizzle the paint on top of each other. But the problem is these uh, paints are slightly runnier. So I think if I do that, the paints will start to mix and to merge a little bit. So I'm just going to drizzle it down the side. So I'm going to do a wandering ring pour, which means um, moving the cup round in lots of little rings, lots of little circles. But instead of keeping my hand still, I'm going to be moving it, hence the wandering. Um, I'm going to try and keep the, cam the paint quite close to the canvas. I find once I get going with ring pours, I'm fine. But to start with, it always looks a bit messy. So I'm going to start right in the corner where I know I can tip that off easily. And I'm going to do lines, um, horizontal lines. Ooh, I hit the other cups of paint. They're in my way. Whoops, messed that up. I might. And then I'm going to come back the other way. So for the next one, I think I'm going to start with it up the other way.
Right, so I've got one cup left. I don't like this big band of turquoise, so I think what I will do is get the cup going to cover some of this canvas here. And then as it gets nearer to the bottom of the cup, I actually do some more rings through the centre. Right, so let's do some tilting to get some of the edges covered. I don't have those tight rings that I wanted um, and I think that's just because my paint's runnier. I think actually I need to risk having a slightly uneven surface when it's finished in favour of getting those tighter rings. I still actually really like the painting but it's it's not the tight rings I wanted at all. So I wasn't happy, I wanted to do more. So controversially, I've used silicone. So I just put some silicone in the bottom of this little pot and used a cocktail stick and I've just dotted it on. There was quite a boring, bland turquoise section here and look what has happened. So by dabbing the silicone on, it's caused all the beautiful bronze to come through. So I've now got a painting which I really quite like. Um, I didn't want to put these silicon spots everywhere, but just to add a little bit of interest in certain places, I love it. I just really nice. And what I love is that they're not perfectly round. They're quite irregular, much more organic looking cells than you'd normally get with silicon. There was another very boring little bit here, so I did the same. And then I just got a little bit carried away and dotted a few more all around. But I actually think it's really helped this painting. Um, I love this bright bronze section. Absolutely stunning. That bronze would not have shown without using that silicone. So it's not something I do very often using extra silicone. Um, but I actually think just for the right painting, if you're trying to improve on something or it looks a bit boring or just want to try or have some fun, do something different, it can work really well. Um, so again there there's a few silicon cells if you look at the actual effects though look at them they're amazing the the lines the ripples the transparency of the paint so you can see the colors underneath the other colors so i actually think this i i think i've added to it by putting the silicon it is slightly controversial i know a lot of artists hate using silicon and will be horrified that i've used silicon but i don't have a problem with silicon and i find i can varnish easily with silicon on um so yeah i've done it <laughs> there you go it's done um right i will be back when it's dry so it's now dry um and 
I'm not that keen on it. Um, <laughs> really not sure about it. I thought, you know, I've done all the work, I've done the painting, I've experimented. So it makes sense just to do a dry close up shot and to post the video just so hopefully someone can learn from this or learn not what, what not to do. Um, I'm just not sure. Um, the cells that I put in here with the silicon, when the painting was wet, I li really liked them. But because these paints are so runny, you can see the cells have just totally lost their shape. There's no, there's no regularity, no roundness to them anymore. So in some ways, I think that looks quite good, quite nice. But it's, I preferred it when it was wet. It looks a little bit more like this section here. They've kept their shape a bit better. But up here, they haven't. And I think it's just because they're so, they were runnier paints. They should have been thicker. Um, having said that, you've just got this wonderful kind of sea of colour um, and details. I think it does look a little bit like, um, well, some, in some ways I think it looks like water. In other ways, I think it definitely looks like um, a vertebrae. Um, I can almost imagine this being maybe some rock or the cross section of a rock and a fossil. Um, and this being the spine of some sort of fossil. Um, it's definitely an interesting one. Um, I'm glad I did add the silicon up here because it just gives it a different dimension. Um, but overall, I'm just, I'm just not sure. It somehow looks a bit too busy. I normally like busy paintings, but there's something that's a bit too busy, I think, about this. But, um, you know, you win some, you lose some, and you, you can't always be in control with fluid art. And I think part of the knack is just to try and go with the flow and see what happens. Um, and not worry if it's not quite right at the end, if you're not completely happy with it. Um, so let me know what you think. Um, do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know. Honest answers. Um, I won't be offended if you don't like it, because as I said, I'm really not sure myself. Um, great. Thank you so much for watching. Um, just leave me any comments. Take care. Bye.